you shouldn't be riding like that. All right, Don. You're lucky you're not hurt. You could have smashed your bike too, riding like that. It's one of some of you boys haven't ended up in hospital long ago. This was the day of the club cycling trip, so I had a talk with the boys and told them how dangerous it was to ride carelessly, not giving correct hand signals, doubling up, and riding no hands. Riding like this is only showing off anyway. Look! No hands! Look, no teeth. I tried them out to see if they knew the correct hand signals. To stop? Yes, that's all right. Now, to make a right hand turn. That was a signal many of the boys failed to give when they rode down to the club. How would you feel if this were done to you? <coughs> Whipping behind trucks was another thing we talked about. There's a risk of being pulled under the vehicle or smashed against the back if it stops suddenly. Doubling up is another dangerous way of riding. It's not only unsafe, in some states, it's breaking the law. Just then, Duncan Gray came along to take the boys out. The boys have all heard of Duncan Gray, an ex-Australian and Olympic champion, and one of the world's greatest riders. I asked him to give the boys a talk on the care and adjustment of their bicycles. This is the bike Duncan used when he won Australian and Empire Games road races. Now he has it fitted with brakes, bell, lamps and mud guards for everyday use. He takes pride in keeping his machine in good working order. That's one of the things that makes a champion. Always use a bicycle which is the right size for you. Duncan pointed out that Don had fallen off his bicycle because the seat was too high. He showed the boys how to adjust the seat to the correct height for the rider. With the leg straight, the foot should fit just under the pedal, or with the ball of the foot on the centre of the pedal, the knee should be slightly bent. Now Don can ride safely and comfortably, and it's easy to get on and off. The modern bicycle with its low centre of gravity is far better than the old time bike. Just see the trouble Egbert had with his machine. Hard to get on and difficult to ride. Duncan showed the boys that the reflector or rear lamp must be set at right angles to the ground so that the light rays will be reflected to the rear and below the wheel rim where it is not likely to be obscured. And make sure it's clean. At night from a motor car, a cyclist whose reflector is dirty or not set correctly is not very distinct. Just see the difference when the cyclist has a clean reflector set at the right angle. Light coloured clothing also helps at night. Brakes are most important. Duncan showed his rear wheel brake operated from the left handlebar, leaving the right hand free to signal. Egbert had a brake on his bike too. But it didn't always work. The old time brake operated on the front wheel only and was not efficient. On the modern cycle, brake shoes act on the wheel rim. They must be adjusted at the right position. If they're too high, they may cut into the side of the tyre and cause a blowout. If they're too low, they may catch in the spokes and break them. Correctly adjusted, they will stop the wheels smoothly and quickly. A thing that Duncan emphasised was the adjustment of the chain. A loose chain may jump off the sprockets and be caught in the rear wheel or catch the pedal crank. It's often the cause of bad accidents. 
If your chain is loose, tighten it by loosening off the wheel nuts and pulling the wheel back. Make sure to tighten the wheel nuts again, then finally test the chain and see that it is neither too tight nor too loose. Tires generally should be blown up hard, though on wet roads it is safer to let them down a little. But under inflated tires make riding harder and cause the covers to crack. Buckled wheels are often the result of loose or broken spokes. Tightening or replacing these is a job for the expert. If amateurs do it, they generally pull the rim out of shape. That's what Ted had done. Most of the boys had looked after their bicycles. Duncan suggested that the few in bad condition be put aside and overhauled before they were used again. The others could set out on the cycling trip knowing that they were not likely to have accidents or breakdowns due to mechanical faults. So that they wouldn't miss the trip, I took the boys whose bicycles had been condemned with me in the truck. Duncan set them all an example in safe riding, keeping to the left and riding not more than two abreast. They found a pleasure in doing things the right way, and that included road courtesy, allowing pedestrians to cross when they have the right of way. This applies especially to children and old people who may be nervous of traffic. When this cyclist behaved so rudely, we were pleased to see a lad standing nearby set a good example and help the old lady across the road. We chased the cyclist who had not only shown such bad manners but had also broken the law. When we caught up with him, I took his name and told him how serious his offence had been. We have a traffic code, rules of the road and safety measures to protect all of us from careless and dangerous road users. These common sense rules must be obeyed. In the hustle and bustle of city life, we must remember we have a duty to our fellow citizens and to show consideration to the less fortunate. remember, wherever you ride, whatever you do, be courteous, obey the highway code, and look after your bicycle.